Hey gang, it's Professor Roth, and welcome to another episode of Biology One. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the macromolecules of life, the four organic molecules. Um, I tend to uh, um, associate these with the four houses of Hogwarts. So we've got our Gryffindor, Slytherins, our Hufflepuffs, and our Ravenclaws. We'll have something very similar with the four types of macromolecules um, that that we're going to study in class. So before we get talking about um, uh, any, any, any particular one in general, let's talk about um, just kind of like an overview of all of them. So the molecules of life, these are the four. They are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And all of these are organic molecules. And what do we mean when we say organic? Well, we really mean that they're made up of carbon and hydrogen uh, mostly. There's also going to be oxygen in there, but for most part, it's carbon and hydrogen that we're really looking at. Um, and we always say, like on you know science shows or, 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 or geeky shows, they'll say you know carbon-based life forms. And this is really what we mean: is that um, uh, life is simply just based off of carbon. It's, it's it has four electrons in its outer shell. It's not. It's kind of in the middle of wanting to bond. So it forms some uh, um, some very uh, nice bonds without becoming an ion. So it becomes a, a covalent bond, which is a pretty strong bond type which is good because that means we're based off of molecules. We're built from molecules that are pretty well put together. Um, so carbon atoms, uh, like we said, they form uh, covalent bonds with the four other atoms. And generally this results in one of two things. It either results in a long chain being formed or some type of ring where it, it, it starts and it, it goes around a circle and connects back to itself. And um, when we start looking at our macromolecules, we'll start noticing that, hey, these are put together in rings, and some of these are put together in long chains, and, and that's, what, that's what kind of what we're talking about. So really, the big thing to keep in mind is that uh, um, the structure of something will determine its function. Why is a screwdriver good at um, twisting a nail into wood? versus a hammer, which can pound a nail into wood, but it can't twist a screw. Well, it has to do with their shape. The shape of it determines their function. And macromolecules are very much the same way. So whenever we're making a macromolecule, we've got to put it together in the right way. So what are the pieces are? What are the pieces called that we used when we put them together? Well, um, the, a complete molecule would be called a polymer, whereas the building parts, uh, the smaller parts of it are called monomers. And so we can make polymers for monomers, and we can also break apart polymers into monomers. So you add a bunch of monomers together, you get a polymer. You take a polymer and break it apart, you'll get a bunch of monomers. And so here's a little chart to kind of help you remember. So uh, polymer is the larger molecule, and monomer is the small part. So for carbohydrates, these are going to be simple sugars. That's the monomer of a carbohydrate. We'll go more into detail about it when we talk about carbs. Um, lipids, these are fatty acids. Fatty acids. Lipids has a really bunch of cool stuff in it. Uh, proteins, which are very, very awesome. Uh, very, very specific, though. If you mess one little thing up, you're going to throw the whole thing off. Uh, but proteins are made up of amino acids, a long chain of amino acids. And nucleic acids, these are made up of nucleotides. So carbohydrates made up of simple sugars, lipids made up of fatty acids, proteins made up of amino acids, and nucleic acids made up of nucleotides. So those are the polymers and their corresponding monomer. So most of those are pretty easy to put together. Um, but, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't get them confused. Don't get them backwards on the exam. Remember, remember what the polymers are. Remember what their, their corresponding monomers are. All right. So whenever we talk about adding monomers together or breaking polymers apart, we talk about two different reactions. One's called a condensation reaction, and the other one's called a hydrolysis reaction. Both of them kind of deal with water. In condensation, you're making water. So if you take a glass that's cold and you set it outside on the porch during the summertime in here in South Mississippi, you'll notice that water starts to form on the glass, and we call that condensation. So essentially, we're making water. Now, the water was already there in the air. Just using the cold temperature glass helped it condense down and form into a droplet, so it was all located in one spot. Um, so this is whenever we say a condensation reaction, what it is is that you're removing water from the air with condensation. In this, you're removing water from two monomers, and that's allowing them to bind together to form a polymer. 
right? So when two monomers are put together to make a polymer, then water is simply created. And I'll show you that in just a second. But the other part is hydrolysis, hydrolysis. Do you remember hydro means water and lysis means to cut or to split something? So hydrolysis using water to cut something up and, and, and also water is being cut up. So water is used to split a polymer into two monomers, okay? So condensations, when we put it together, we end up taking water out of it and uh, allowing the two monomers to bind together. With hydrolysis, we add the water back and it splits the, two, the uh, polymer apart into two monomers. So you just kind of keep that in mind as we go. Here's another good example. Condensation reaction, I like to think of this as a Reparo spell. If something is broken in small parts, you use the Reparo spell to put it back together, right? So with a condensation reaction, here you have uh, uh, two monomers and these are some binding sites that are on them. And they're capped. This has got a well, this is called a hydroxyl group. This has got a hydroxyl group on its end. It's like a little cap that you know it seals it off nicely. And the same thing on this one. It has a hydroxyl group. It seals it off nicely. What we're going to do is we're going to take out water. So two of the hydrogens and one of the oxygens. We're going to pull that out and make water. But when we do, we open up these binding sites. Oxygen needs to bind to something else. This little carbon that's over here is what this N represents. The carbon that's over here needs to bind to something else. So they bind together. And we end up taking two smaller pieces and putting it together to make one larger piece. But what have we done? Well, we've removed, we created water. We've removed water from it and, and, and made water. Okay, so a condensation reaction, water is starting to build up. So the opposite would be, um, a hydrolysis would be our reducto spell, right? That's our reducto spell. We're going to take one large thing and we're going to break it apart. By how? We're going to add water to it. So it's the same as before, just in reverse. Here's a polymer. We've got a water molecule. We're going to add this back to it. Well, when we do, we're going to attach one of these hydrogens to the oxygen. And the other OH is going to cap off the uh, other monomer. And so we just reversed the reaction from earlier. But we used water to split these two apart. So hydrolysis, water splitting. We use water to split it apart. So this is a hydrolysis reaction. So putting things together is condensation, taking them apart is hydrolysis. All right. So. As we continue on, we'll talk about the four organic molecules, and we're going to talk about each one in turn, and, but I kind of associate them with certain houses. So how do I do it? Well, I think that carbohydrates, these are going to be like a Gryffindor. So they're, they're sweet, and they're so sweet, you just want to smack them sometimes, and they can be really hyper and annoying, and, and just, they just but still, you know, everybody likes candy, so, but not everybody likes a lot of candy. You can handle them in small doses, right? So that's kind of how I think of carbohydrates with, uh, uh, with Gryffindors. So nucleic acids, these are more uh, 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 very dependable. Everybody's got this. Um, and they can pretty much everybody, you know, like everybody out there has nucleic acids in them. And they really help us function and do very practical things for us. Uh, so I think of those as being our Hufflepuffs. Well, it goes without saying that lipids, as some of you may know, lipids have tails. Well, so do snakes. And so our greasy, greasy lipids are going to be our Slytherins and uh, our proteins. Proteins are very exact. They have to be put together in such a precise way. And it, it's, a, it's a, uh, um, uh, such a way that it, it grows in strength and structure as it gets bigger. And everything has to be just right or it's not going to work. And I think that's kind of like our Ravenclaws. And I'm a Ravenclaw, by the way. Uh, shout out to my other Ravenclaws. Um, but this is kind of how I do the four houses of organic uh, molecules, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, lipids, and proteins. And so we'll continue to talk about those um, uh, one at a time.